Algorithm, Wikipedia article audio In mathematics and computer science, an algorithm ALGE trademark RIDI trademark M is an unambiguous specification of how to solve a class of problems. Algorithms can perform calculation, data processing and automated reasoning tasks. An algorithm is an effective method that can be expressed within a finite amount of space and time and in a well-defined formal language for calculating a function. Starting from an initial state and initial input, the instructions describe a computation that, when executed, proceeds through a finite number of well-defined successive states, eventually producing output and terminating at a final ending state. The transition from one state to the next is not necessarily deterministic. Some algorithms, known as randomized algorithms, incorporate random input. Etymology Informal definition The concept of algorithm has existed for centuries and the use of the concept can be ascribed to Greek mathematicians. The term algorithm itself derives from the 9th century mathematician Muayyenamid ibn Ma'sa al Khwarizma, Latinized algorithmi. A partial formalization of what would become the modern notion of algorithm began with attempts to solve the Inchidung's problem posed by David Hilbert in 1928. Subsequent formalizations were framed as attempts to define effective calculability or effective method. Those formalizations included the GA del A Euro Herbrand A Euro clean recursive functions of 1930, 1934, and 1935, Alonzo Church S. Lambda Calculus of 1936, Emil Post S. Formulation 1 of 1936 and Alan Turing S. Turing Machines of 1936A Euro 7 and 1939. Giving a formal definition of algorithms, corresponding to the intuitive notion, remains a challenging problem. The word algorithm probably has its roots in Latinaizing the name of al in a first step to algorithmus. There is no prior root for algorithm or algorit, neither in Latin, nor in Greek. The word seems to have evolved as the name for the new mathematics coming to Europe, characterized by the use of the then emerging Arabic numerals, and was probably influenced by the Greek word arithmos, i.e. i plus or minus i i superscript 1 i i 1 fourth i o e i, meaning number, leading to the t in algorithm. Al Khwarizma was a Persian mathematician, astronomer, geographer, and scholar in the House of Wisdom in Baghdad, whose name means the native of Khwarezm, a region that was part of Greater Iran and is now in Uzbekistan. About 825, he wrote a treatise in the Arabic language, which was translated into Latin in the 12th century under the title Algorithmi de Numero Indurum. This title means Algorithmi on the Numbers of the Indians, where Algorithmi was the translator's Latinization of Al Khwarizmi's name. Al Khwarizmi was the most widely read mathematician in Europe in the late Middle Ages, primarily through another of his books, The Algebra. In late medieval Latin, Algorithmus, English Algorism, the corruption of his name, simply meant the decimal number system. In the 15th century, under the influence of the Greek word a 1 4th euro i i superscript 1 i i 1 4th i o e i number, the Latin word was altered to algorithmus, and the corresponding English term algorithm is first attested in the 17th century, the modern sense was introduced in the 19th century. In English, it was first used in about 1230 and then by Chaucer in 1391. English adopted the French term, but it wasn't until the late 19th century that algorithm took on the meaning that it has in modern English. Another early use of the word is from 1240, 
in a manual titled Carmen de Algorismo composed by Alexander de Vildieu. It begins thus. Formalization Hec algorithmus ars presens dissiter, in qua slash talibus interim fruimer bis quinqua figures. Which translates as Expressing algorithms. Algorithm is the art by which at present we use those Indian figures, which number two times five. The poem is a few hundred lines long and summarizes the art of calculating with the new style of Indian dice, or talibus interim, or Hindu numerals. An informal definition could be a set of rules that precisely defines a sequence of operations which would include all computer programs, including programs that do not perform numeric calculations. Generally, a program is only an algorithm if it stops eventually. Implementation A prototypical example of an algorithm is the Euclidean algorithm to determine the maximum common divisor of two integers, an example is described by the flow chart above and as an example in a later section. Computer Algorithms Bolos, Jeffrey and 1974, 1999 offer an informal meaning of the word in the following quotation. Examples No human being can write fast enough, or long enough or small enough a euro to list all members of an innumerably infinite set by writing out their names, one after another, in some notation. But humans can do something equally useful, in the case of certain innumerably infinite sets, they can give explicit instructions for determining the nth member of the set, for arbitrary finite n. Such instructions are to be given quite explicitly, in a form in which they could be followed by a computing machine, or by a human who is capable of carrying out only very elementary operations on symbols. An enumerably infinite set is one whose elements can be put into one-to-one -one correspondence with the integers. Thus, Bolos and Jeffrey are saying that an algorithm implies instructions for a process that creates output integers from an arbitrary input integer or integers that, in theory, can be arbitrarily large. Thus an algorithm can be an algebraic equation such as y equals m plus n a euro two arbitrary input variables m and n that produce an output y. But various authors' attempts to define the notion indicate that the word implies much more than this, something on the order of Algorithm example The concept of algorithm is also used to define the notion of decidability. That notion is central for explaining how formal systems come into being starting from a small set of axioms and rules. In logic, the time that an algorithm requires to complete cannot be measured, as it is not apparently related with our customary physical dimension. From such uncertainties, that characterize ongoing work, stems the unavailability of a definition of algorithm that suits both concrete and abstract usage of the term. Algorithms are essential to the way computers process data. Many computer programs contain algorithms that detail the specific instructions a computer should perform to carry out a specified task, such as calculating employees' paychecks or printing students' report cards. Thus, an algorithm can be considered to be any sequence of operations that can be simulated by a Turing-complete system. Authors who assert this thesis include Minsky, Savage, and Gurevich. Minsky, but we will also maintain, with Turing, that any procedure which could naturally be called effective, can in fact be realized by a machine. Although this may seem extreme, the arguments, in its favor are hard to refute. Gurevich 
Turing's informal argument in favor of his thesis justifies a stronger thesis, every algorithm can be simulated by a Turing machine, according to Savage, an algorithm is a computational process defined by a Turing machine. Typically, when an algorithm is associated with processing information, data can be read from an input source, written to an output device and stored for further processing. Stored data are regarded as part of the internal state of the entity performing the algorithm. In practice, the state is stored in one or more data structures. Euclid's Algorithm for some such computational process, the algorithm must be rigorously defined, specified in the way it applies in all possible circumstances that could arise. That is, any conditional steps must be systematically dealt with, case by case, the criteria for each case must be clear. Computer Language for Euclid's Algorithm because an algorithm is a precise list of precise steps, the order of computation is always crucial to the functioning of the algorithm. Instructions are usually assumed to be listed explicitly, and are described as starting from the top and going down to the bottom, an idea that is described more formally by flow of control. A location is symbolized by uppercase letter, e.g. S, A, etc., the varying quantity in a location is written in lower case letter and associated with the location's name. For example, location L at the start might contain the number L equals 3009. So far, this discussion of the formalization of an algorithm has assumed the premises of imperative programming. This is the most common conception and it attempts to describe a task in discrete, mechanical means. Unique to this conception of formalized algorithms is the assignment operation, setting the value of a variable. It derives from the intuition of memory as a scratch pad. There is an example below of such an assignment. For some alternate conceptions of what constitutes an algorithm see functional programming and logic programming. Constant time, if the time needed by the algorithm is the same, regardless of the input size. E.g. an access to an array element, linear time, if the time is proportional to the input size. E.g. the traverse of a list, logarithmic time if the time is a logarithmic function of the input size. E.g. binary search algorithm, polynomial time, if the time is a power of the input size. E.g. the bubble sort algorithm has quadratic time complexity, exponential time, if the time is an exponential function of the input size. E.g. brute force search. Algorithms can be expressed in many kinds of notation, including natural languages, pseudocode, flowcharts, Draken charts, programming languages, or control tables. Natural language expressions of algorithms tend to be verbose and ambiguous, and are rarely used for complex or technical algorithms. Pseudocode, flowcharts, Draken charts, and control tables are structured ways to express algorithms that avoid many of the ambiguities common in natural language statements. Programming languages are primarily intended for expressing algorithms in a form that can be executed by a computer, but are often used as a way to define or document algorithms. An inelegant program for Euclid's algorithm. An elegant program for Euclid's algorithm. Testing the Euclid algorithms. Measuring and improving the Euclid algorithms. There is a wide variety of representations possible and one can express a given Turing machine program as a sequence of machine tables, as flow charts and Draken charts, or as a form of rudimentary machine code or assembly code called sets of quadruples. 
An algorithm operating on data that represents continuous quantities, even though this data is represented by discrete approximation sa euro such algorithms are studied in numerical analysis, or, an algorithm in the form of a differential equation that operates continuously on the data, running on an analog computer. Representations of algorithms can be classed into three accepted levels of Turing machine description. For an example of the simple algorithm at M and N described in all three levels, see algorithm number examples. Most algorithms are intended to be implemented as computer programs. However, algorithms are also implemented by other means such as in a biological neural network, in an electrical circuit, or in a mechanical device. In computer systems, an algorithm is basically an instance of logic written in software by software developers to be effective for the intended target computer to produce output from given input. An optimal algorithm, even running in old hardware, would produce faster results than a non-optimal algorithm for the same purpose, running in more efficient hardware, that is why algorithms, like computer hardware, are considered technology. Elegant programs, good programs, the notion of simplicity and elegance appears informally in Knud and precisely in Chaitin. Chaitin prefaces his definition with I'll show you can't prove that a program is elegant a euro such a proof would solve the halting problem. Algorithmic Analysis Algorithm versus function computable by an algorithm, for a given function multiple algorithms may exist. This is true, even without expanding the available instruction set available to the programmer. Rogers observes that it is, important to distinguish between the notion of algorithm, i.e. procedure, and the notion of function computable by algorithm, i.e. mapping yielded by procedure. The same function may have several different algorithms. Unfortunately there may be a trade-off between goodness and elegance a euro an elegant program may take more steps to complete a computation than one less elegant. An example that uses Euclid's algorithm appears below. Computers, models of computation, a computer is a restricted type of machine, a discrete deterministic mechanical device that blindly follows its instructions. Melzik's and Lambeck's primitive models reduced this notion to four elements, discrete, distinguishable locations, discrete, indistinguishable counters an agent, and a list of instructions that are effective relative to the capability of the agent. Formal versus Empirical Execution Efficiency Classification Minsky describes a more congenial variation of Lambeck's abacus model in his very simple basis for computability. Minsky's machine proceeds sequentially through its five instructions, unless either a conditional IFA euro then goto or an unconditional goto changes program flow out of sequence. Besides halt, Minsky's machine includes three assignment operations, zero, successor, and decrement. Rarely must a programmer write code with such a limited instruction set. But Minsky shows that his machine is Turing complete with only four general types of instructions conditional goto, unconditional goto, assignment slash replacement slash substitution, and halt. Simulation of an algorithm, computer language. Knud advises the reader that the best way to learn an algorithm is to try it, immediately take pen and paper and work through an example. But what about a simulation or execution of the real thing? The programmer must translate the algorithm into a language that the simulator slash computer slash computer can effectively execute. Stone gives an example of this, 
when computing the roots of a quadratic equation the computer must know how to take a square root. If they don't, then the algorithm, to be effective, must provide a set of rules for extracting a square root. This means that the programmer must know a language that is effective relative to the target computing agent. But what model should be used for the simulation? Van Emd Boas observes even if we base complexity theory on abstract instead of concrete machines, arbitrariness of the choice of a model remains. It is at this point that the notion of simulation enters. When speed is being measured, the instruction set matters. For example, the sub-program in Euclid's algorithm to compute the remainder would execute much faster if the programmer had a modulus instruction available rather than just subtraction. Structured programming, canonical structures, per the Church a Euro Turing thesis, any algorithm can be computed by a model known to be Turing complete, and per Minsky's demonstrations, Turing completeness requires only four instruction types a Euro conditional goto, unconditional goto, assignment, halt. Kemeny and Kurtz observe that, while undisciplined use of unconditional gotos and conditional if then gotos can result in spaghetti code, a programmer can write structured programs using only these instructions, on the other hand, it is also possible and not too hard, to write badly structured programs in a structured language. Toshworth augments the three B.A.M. Jacobini canonical structures, sequence, if then else, and while do, with two more, do while and case. An additional benefit of a structured program is that it lends itself to proofs of correctness using mathematical induction. By implementation Canonical flowchart symbols, the graphical aid called a flowchart offers a way to describe and document an algorithm. Like program flow of a Minsky machine, a flowchart always starts at the top of a page and proceeds down. Its primary symbols are only four, the directed arrow showing program flow, the rectangle, the diamond, and the dot. The BAHMA Euro Jacopini canonical structures are made of these primitive shapes. Substructures can nest in rectangles, but only if a single exit occurs from the superstructure. The symbols, and their use to build the canonical structures, are shown in the diagram. One of the simplest algorithms is to find the largest number in a list of numbers of random order. Finding the solution requires looking at every number in the list. From this follows a simple algorithm, which can be stated in a high-level description English prose, as High-level description Formal description, written in prose but much closer to the high-level language of a computer program, the following is the more formal coding of the algorithm in pseudocode or pidgin code. Euclid S algorithm to compute the greatest common divisor to two numbers appears as proposition 2 in book 7 of his elements. Euclid poses the problem thus, given two numbers not prime to one another, to find their greatest common measure. He defines a number a multitude composed of units, a counting number, a positive integer not including zero. To measure is to place a shorter measuring length s successively along longer length l until the remaining portion r is less than the shorter length s. In modern words, remainder r equals l a q a s, q being the quotient, or remainder r is the modulus, the integer fractional part left over after the division. For Euclid's method to succeed, the starting lengths must satisfy two requirements, the lengths must not be zero, and the subtraction must be a euro or a proper a euro, i.e., a test must guarantee that the smaller of the two numbers is subtracted from the larger. Euclid's original proof adds a third requirement, 
the two lengths must not be prime to one another. Euclid stipulated this so that he could construct a reductio ad absurdum proof that the two numbers common measure is in fact the greatest. While Nicomachus' algorithm is the same as Euclid's, when the numbers are prime to one another, it yields the number one for their common measure. So, to be precise, the following is really Nicomachus' algorithm. Only a few instruction types are required to execute Euclid's algorithm Euro some logical tests, unconditional goto, assignment, and subtraction. The following algorithm is framed as Knut's four-step version of Euclid's and Nicomachus, but, rather than using division to find the remainder, it uses successive subtractions of the shorter length s from the remaining length r until r is less than s. The high-level description, shown in boldface, is adapted from Knud 1973-2A-04. Input By design paradigm Optimization problems E0 E1 until the remaining length r in r is less than the shorter length s in s, repeatedly subtract the measuring number s in s from the remaining length r in r. By field of study E2, either the last measure was exact, the remainder in r is zero, and the program can halt, or the algorithm must continue, the last measure left a remainder in r less than measuring number in s. By complexity Continuous algorithms Legal issues History, development of the notion of algorithm Ancient Near East Discrete and distinguishable symbols Manipulation of symbols as placeholders for numbers, algebra Mechanical contrivances with discrete states Mathematics during the 19th century up to the mid-20th century Emile Post and Alan Turing J. B. Rosser and S. C. Clean History after 1950 Notes E3, The Nut of Euclid's Algorithm Use remainder R to measure what was previously smaller number S L serves as a temporary location. Output Done The following version of Euclid's algorithm requires only six core instructions to do what 13 are required to do by inelegant, worse, inelegant requires more types of instructions. The flowchart of elegant can be found at the top of this article. In the basic language, the steps are numbered, and the instruction let equals is the assignment instruction symbolized by A. The following version can be used with object-oriented languages. How elegant works, in place of an outer Euclid loop, elegant shifts back and forth between two CO loops, an AB loop that computes AAAAB, an ABA per thousand A loop that computes BABAA. This works because, when at last the minuend m is less than or equal to the subtrahend s, the minuend can become s and the subtrahend can become the new r, in other words the sense of the subtraction reverses. Does an algorithm do what its author wants it to do? A few test cases usually suffice to confirm core functionality. One source uses 3,009 and 884. Knut suggested 40,902, 24,140. Another interesting case is the two relatively prime numbers 14,157 and 5,950. But exceptional cases must be identified and tested. Will inelegant perform properly when R S, S R, R equals S? Ditto for elegant, B A, A B, A equals B. What happens when one number is zero, 
both numbers are zero. What happens if negative numbers are entered? Fractional numbers? If the input numbers, i.e. the domain of the function computed by the algorithm slash program, is to include only positive integers including zero, then the failures at zero indicate that the algorithm is a partial function rather than a total function. A notable failure due to exceptions is the Arian 5 Flight 501 rocket failure. Proof of program correctness by use of mathematical induction, Knud demonstrates the application of mathematical induction to an extended version of Euclid's algorithm, and he proposes a general method applicable to proving the validity of any algorithm. Toshworth proposes that a measure of the complexity of a program be the length of its correctness proof. Elegance versus Goodness with only six core instructions, elegant is the clear winner, compared to inelegant at 13 instructions. However, inelegant is faster. Algorithm analysis indicates why this is the case, elegant does two conditional tests in every subtraction loop, whereas inelegant only does one. As the algorithm requires many loop throughs, on average much time is wasted doing a b equals zero. Test that is needed only after the remainder is computed. Can the algorithms be improved, once the programmer judges a program fit and effective a euro that is, it computes the function intended by its author a euro then the question becomes, can it be improved? The compactness of an elegant can be improved by the elimination of five steps. But Chaitin proved that compacting an algorithm cannot be automated by a generalized algorithm, rather, it can only be done heuristically, i.e., by exhaustive search, trial and error, cleverness, insight, application of inductive reasoning, etc. Observe that steps 4, 5, and 6 are repeated in steps 11, 12 and 13. Comparison with elegant provides a hint that these steps, together with steps 2 and 3, can be eliminated. This reduces the number of core instructions from 13 to 8, which makes it more elegant than elegant, at 9 steps. The speed of elegant can be improved by moving the b equals zero. Test outside of the two subtraction loops. This change calls for the addition of three instructions. Now elegant computes the example numbers faster, whether this is always the case for any given a, b and r, s would require a detailed analysis. It is frequently important to know how much of a particular resource is theoretically required for a given algorithm. Methods have been developed for the analysis of algorithms to obtain such quantitative answers, for example, the sorting algorithm above has a time requirement of O, using the big O notation with N as the length of the list. At all times the algorithm only needs to remember two values the largest number found so far, and its current position in the input list. Therefore, it is said to have a space requirement of O, if the space required to store the input numbers is not counted, or O if it is counted. Different algorithms may complete the same task with a different set of instructions in less or more time, space, or effort than others. For example, a binary search algorithm outperforms a sequential search when used for table lookups on sorted lists or arrays. The analysis and study of algorithms is a discipline of computer science, and is often practiced abstractly without the use of a specific programming language or implementation. In this sense, Algorithm analysis resembles other mathematical disciplines in that it focuses on the underlying properties of the algorithm and not on the specifics of any particular implementation. Usually pseudocode is used for analysis as it is the simplest and most general representation. However, ultimately, 
most algorithms are usually implemented on particular hardware slash software platforms and their algorithmic efficiency is eventually put to the test using real code. For the solution of a one-off problem, the efficiency of a particular algorithm may not have significant consequences but for algorithms designed for fast interactive, commercial, or long-life scientific usage it may be critical. Scaling from small n to large n frequently exposes inefficient algorithms that are otherwise benign. Empirical testing is useful because it may uncover unexpected interactions that affect performance. Benchmarks may be used to compare before-slash-after potential improvements to an algorithm after program optimization. Empirical tests cannot replace formal analysis, though, and are not trivial to perform in a fair manner. To illustrate the potential improvements possible even in well-established algorithms, a recent significant innovation, relating to FFT algorithms, can decrease processing time up to 1,000 times for applications like medical imaging. In general, speed improvements depend on special properties of the problem, which are very common in practical applications. Speed-ups of this magnitude enable computing devices that make extensive use of image processing to consume less power. There are various ways to classify algorithms, each with its own merits. One way to classify algorithms is by implementation means. Another way of classifying algorithms is by their design methodology or paradigm. There is a certain number of paradigms, each different from the other. Furthermore, each of these categories include many different types of algorithms. Some common paradigms are For optimization problems there is a more specific classification of algorithms, an algorithm for such problems may fall into one or more of the general categories described above as well as into one of the following. Every field of science has its own problems and needs efficient algorithms. Related problems in one field are often studied together. Some example classes are search algorithms, sorting algorithms, merge algorithms, numerical algorithms, graph algorithms, string algorithms, computational geometric algorithms, combinatorial algorithms, medical algorithms, machine learning, cryptography, data compression algorithms and parsing techniques. Fields tend to overlap with each other, and algorithm advances in one field may improve those of other, sometimes completely unrelated, fields. For example, dynamic programming was invented for optimization of resource consumption in industry, but is now used in solving a broad range of problems in many fields. Algorithms can be classified by the amount of time they need to complete compared to their input size. Some problems may have multiple algorithms of differing complexity while other problems might have no algorithms or no known efficient algorithms. There are also mappings from some problems to other problems. Owing to this, it was found to be more suitable to classify the problems themselves instead of the algorithms into equivalence classes based on the complexity of the best possible algorithms for them. The adjective continuous when applied to the word algorithm can mean Algorithms, by themselves, are not usually patentable. In the United States, a claim consisting solely of simple manipulations of abstract concepts, numbers, or signals does not constitute processes, and hence algorithms are not patentable. However, practical applications of algorithms are sometimes patentable. For example, in Diamond V, Dear, the application of a simple feedback algorithm to aid in the curing of synthetic rubber was deemed patentable. 
The patenting of software is highly controversial, and there are highly criticized patents involving algorithms, especially data compression algorithms, such as Unis's LZW patent. Additionally, some cryptographic algorithms have export restrictions. Researcher, Andrew Tutt, argues that algorithms should be overseen by a specialist regulatory agency, similar to FDA. His academic work emphasizes that the rise of increasingly complex algorithms calls for the need to think about the effects of algorithms today. Due to the nature and complexity of algorithms, it will prove to be difficult to hold algorithms accountable under criminal law. Tut recognizes that while some algorithms will be beneficial to help meet technological demand, others should not be used or sold if they fail to meet safety requirements. Thus, for Tut, algorithms will require closer forms of federal uniformity, expert judgment, political independence, and pre-market review to prevent the introduction of unacceptably dangerous algorithms into the market. The issue of algorithmic accountability is of particular relevance in the field of dynamic and nonlinearly programmed systems, e.g. artificial neural networks, deep learning, and genetic algorithms. Algorithms were used in ancient Greece. Two examples are the sieve of Eratosthenes, which was described in Introduction to Arithmetic by Nicomachus, CH 9.2 and the Euclidean algorithm, which was first described in Euclid's Elements, CH 9.1 Babylonian clay tablets describe and employ algorithmic procedures to compute the time and place of significant astronomical events. Tally marks, to keep track of their flocks, their sacks of grain and their money the ancients used tallying accumulating stones or marks scratched on sticks, or making discrete symbols in clay. Through the Babylonian and Egyptian use of marks and symbols, eventually Roman numerals and the abacus evolved. Tally marks appear prominently in unary numeral system arithmetic used in Turing machine and post-Euro Turing machine computations. The work of the ancient Greek geometers, the Indian mathematician Brahmagupta, and the Persian mathematician Al-Khwarizmi, and Western European mathematicians culminated in Leibniz's notion of the calculus ratiocinator. A good century and a half ahead of his time, Leibniz proposed an algebra of logic, an algebra that would specify the rules for manipulating logical concepts in the manner that ordinary algebra specifies the rules for manipulating numbers. The clock, Bolter credits the invention of the weight-driven clock as the key invention, in particular the verge escapement that provides us with the tick and talk of a mechanical clock. The accurate automatic machine led immediately to mechanical automata beginning in the 13th century and finally to computational machines a euro the difference engine and analytical engines of Charles Babbage and Countess Ada Lovelace, mid-19th century. Lovelace is credited with the first creation of an algorithm intended for processing on a computer a euro Babbage's analytical engine the first device considered a real Turing complete computer instead of just a calculator a euro and is sometimes called history's first programmer as a result, though a full implementation of Babbage's second device would not be realized until decades after her lifetime. Logical Machines 1870A Euro Stanley Jevons Logical Abacus and Logical Machine the technical problem was to reduce Boolean equations when presented in a form similar to what are now known as Carnot maps. Jevons describes first a simple abacus of slips of wood furnished with pins, contrived so that any part or class of the combinations can be picked out mechanically. More recently however I have reduced the system to a completely mechanical form 
and have thus embodied the whole of the indirect process of inference in what may be called a logical machine his machine came equipped with certain movable wooden rods and at the foot are 21 keys like those of a piano with this machine he could analyze a syllogism or any other simple logical argument this machine he displayed in 1870 before the fellows of the Royal Society. Another logician John Venn, however, in his 1881 Symbolic Logic, turned a jaundiced eye to this effort, I have no high estimate myself of the interest or importance of what are sometimes called logical machines. It does not seem to me that any contrivances at present known or likely to be discovered really deserve the name of logical machines, see more at algorithm characterizations. But not to be outdone he too presented a plan somewhat analogous, I apprehend, to Professor Jevons Abacus, Gain, corresponding to Professor Jevons's logical machine, the following contrivance may be described. I prefer to call it merely a logical diagram machine, but I suppose that it could do very completely all that can be rationally expected of any logical machine. Jacquard Loom, Hollerith Punch Cards, Telegraphy and Telephonia Euro The Electromechanical Relay, Bell and Newell indicate that the Jacquard Loom, precursor to Hollerith Cards, and telephone switching technologies were the roots of a tree leading to the development of the first computers. By the mid-19th century the telegraph, the precursor of the telephone, was in use throughout the world, its discrete and distinguishable encoding of letters as dots and dashes a common sound. By the late 19th century the ticker tape was in use, as was the use of Hollerith cards in the 1890 U.S. Census. Then came the teleprinter with its punched paper use of BA.Code code on tape. Telephone switching networks of electromechanical relays was behind the work of George Stibitz, the inventor of the digital adding device. As he worked in Bell Laboratories, he observed the burdensome use of mechanical calculators with gears. He went home one evening in 1937 intending to test his idea. When the tinkering was over, Stibitz had constructed a binary adding device. Davis observes the particular importance of the electromechanical relay. Symbols and Rules in rapid succession the mathematics of George Boole, Gottlob Frege, and Giuseppe Piano reduced arithmetic to a sequence of symbols manipulated by rules. Piano's The Principles of Arithmetic, presented by a new method was the first attempt at an axiomatization of mathematics in a symbolic language. But Hygenort gives Frege this kudos. Frege's is perhaps the most important single work ever written in logic, in which we see a formula language, that is a lingua characterica, a language written with special symbols, for pure thought, that is, free from rhetorical embellishments, constructed from specific symbols that are manipulated according to definite rules. The work of Frege was further simplified and amplified by Alfred North Whitehead and Bertrand Russell in their Principia Mathematica. The paradoxes, at the same time a number of disturbing paradoxes appeared in the literature, in particular the Burley 40 paradox, the Russell paradox, and the Richard paradox. The resultant considerations led to Kurt G. A. Del S. paper A Euro. He specifically cites the paradox of the Lyra Euro that completely reduces rules of recursion to numbers. Effective calculability, in an effort to solve the Inchidung's problem defined precisely by Hilbert in 1928, mathematicians first set about to define what was meant by an effective method or effective calculation or effective calculability. In rapid succession the following appeared, Alonzo Church, Stephen Kleene, and J.B. 
Rosser S.I. Calculus A finely honed definition of general recursion from the work of G.A. Dell acting on suggestions of Jacques Herbrand and subsequent simplifications by Kleene. Church's proof that the Entscheidung's problem was unsolvable, Emile Post's definition of effective calculability as a worker mindlessly following a list of instructions to move left or right through a sequence of rooms and while there either mark or erase a paper or observe the paper and make a yes-no decision about the next instruction. Alan Turing's proof of that the Entscheidung's problem was unsolvable by use of his A machine A euro in effect almost identical to Post's formulation, J. Barclay Rosser's definition of effective method in terms of a machine. S. C. Clean's proposal of a precursor to church thesis that he called Thesis I and a few years later Clean's renaming his thesis Church's thesis and proposing Turing's thesis. Here is a remarkable coincidence of two men not knowing each other but describing a process of men as computers working on computation sa euro and they yield virtually identical definitions. Emile Post described the actions of a computer as follows. His symbol space would be Alan Turing's work preceded that of Stibitz, it is unknown whether Stibitz knew of the work of Turing. Turing's biographer believed that Turing's use of a typewriter-like model derived from a youthful interest, Alan had dreamt of inventing typewriters as a boy, Mrs. Turing had a typewriter, and he could well have begun by asking himself what was meant by calling a typewriter mechanical. Given the prevalence of Morse code and telegraphy, ticker tape machines, and teletypewriters we might conjecture that all were influences. Turing a euro his model of computation is now called a Turing machine a euro begins, as did Post, with an analysis of a human computer that he whittles down to a simple set of basic motions and states of mind. But he continues a step further and creates a machine as a model of computation of numbers. Turing's reduction yields the following. It may be that some of these change necessarily invoke a change of state of mind. The most general single operation must therefore be taken to be one of the following. A few years later, Turing expanded his analysis with this forceful expression of it. J. Barclay Rosser defined an effective method in the following manner. Rosser's footnote number 5 references the work of Church and Clean and their definition of idefinability, in particular Church's use of it in his An Unsolvable Problem of Elementary Number Theory, Herbrand and G. A. Dell and their use of recursion in particular G. A. Dell's use in his famous paper on formally undecidable propositions of Principia Mathematica and Related Systems I and Post and Turing in their mechanism models of computation. Stephen C. Kleene defined as his now famous thesis I known as the Church a Euro Turing thesis. But he did this in the following context. A number of efforts have been directed toward further refinement of the definition of algorithm, and activity is ongoing because of issues surrounding, in particular, foundations of mathematics and philosophy of mind. For more, see Algorithm Characterizations. Bibliography Secondary References